This week has seen an amazing announcement from Amazon related to its Amazon Web Services in that it now provides virtual machines using processors based on the ARM architecture alongside the virtual machines based on the x86 architecture. So this is a fundamental change in the server space from Intel towards ARM. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, when people think about ARM processors, they normally think about the chips that they have inside of their smartphones, and quite rightly so, because it is a big and important part of ARM's business. However, ARM processors are used all over the place. At one end, their microcontrollers are used in everything from kind of like microwave ovens all the way through to kind of medical equipment, whereas their uh, bigger Cortex designs, like the Cortex A72, are not just used inside of smartphones, they're also used in networking equipment and in infrastructure equipment and also in servers. Now what's just happened is that Amazon has a rolled out for everybody to start using uh, servers as part of its Amazon web services that run on ARM chips, not on Intel based chips. And these ARM chips are des designed themselves by Amazon. So Amazon, just like Qualcomm, just like Samsung, just like Apple, have designed their own chip based on what we think is the Cortex A72, and it's designed for servers. And that means when we say designed for servers, it means it's, it's actually designed to run from mains power. It's obviously got to take into effect you know, the cooling that that can do, and it's got lots of memory I.O., and it'll have lots of caches, and it'll be very good at, you know, kind of doing, you know, disk stuff, and maybe there's even PCI there. You know, it's designed for a server, not for a mobile phone, and they've rolled it out, and in fact, you can use it today. Now, of course, this is a major, major shift in what has been an area dominated completely by Intel or x86 design processes up until now. And of course, the advantages for uh, Amazon, first of all, is that the chips are meant to be more power efficient, which means they're using less electricity, less cooling, okay, to actually create these chips. They can probably pack more servers into a smaller physical space, which means that you get uh, more servers in the buildings that they're building. And of course, they're designing it themselves, which means that they have full control over this full this design process and they can manufacture the chips themselves. And it means they get out from underneath the shadow of Intel, maybe even the monopoly, we could say, of Intel, who've been providing up until now for decades, the server chips that we use uh, that power the web, basically. So what I've done is I've actually created two virtual machines on Amazon, one based on Intel with eight cores, one based on ARM with eight cores, and I wanna show you the two of them running so you can see what you get with these two uh, virtual machines. Okay, so I want to show you the new ARM-based servers that Amazon are offering in action. So here I've got three windows open. Let's ignore the one here in the bottom right-hand corner for the moment, we'll come to that in a second. But here on the left is a traditional Intel-based uh, virtual server from Amazon and if we do an LS CPU here we can see that it is a uh, Xeon E5 2686 uh, version 4 and according to Intel these are built on 14 nanometer processes and they cost about $4,000 each so that's how much they're going for and they have 22 cores and 44 hyper threads and obviously we're using a virtual server here so we've got eight of those uh, servers here in our machine and if we look here in this window on the right we can say LSCPU and it just tells us that it's AR64 that's uh, ARM64 architecture and there's a lot less information because of course this is about um, this is from Amazon They're not giving away too much information and again we've got the same number of eight virtual uh, cores here on our virtual machine. Now accordingly this is meant to be a Cortex A72 based uh, CPU so of course, after that, we had the Cortex A73 and we've got the Cortex A75. And so obviously, this is uh, a couple of years old and it's been in development and this is what we've got today. So, now if I've got a file, which is my thread testing program, which I used when I reviewed the Raspberry Pi recently, if I do a file there, we can see that it's a 64-bit uh, x86 Intel uh, uh, file. I've got exactly the same C program uh, written on here. And if we just test that, we can see that it is 64-bit, but now it's ARM 64. So it's basically 64-bit Intel versus 64-bit ARM. So let's have a look at what happens. So we're going to run the program here 
using my uh, testing tool and we're going to run eight threads simultaneously to look for lots and lots of um, uh, prime numbers, about 12 and a half million of them in fact. So there is the command we're going to run on each machine. So let's fire it off on each one. It's being timed so we know how long it's going to take at the end of it. We don't need to wait on just to see which comes in first here. Now down the bottom right hand corner I've got a Raspberry Pi that's done the same thing and we'll talk about that in a second. So here are the results back. Now look at this, look. Here on the Intel to find those 12 and a half million prime numbers using eight threads using my program it took 9.8 seconds. Okay, now here over on the ARM server, the same program, same C program, 12 and a half million threads, it took 8.9 seconds. So 9.8 seconds compared to 8.9 seconds. So which one was faster? The ARM processor. Now I get so many people telling me that, oh, I don't think ARM will ever be able to catch up with Intel. That's nonsense. It's the fact that ARM chips have always been built to run on mobile phones using batteries. Okay, but when you actually build one designed for a server, look at what you've got. Now, let me just compare that, the one down here, down here in the window, I'll bring it up to the forefront now. I have exactly the same program, but it's a 32-bit version for ARM, okay, because it's running on a Raspberry Pi. So this gives us four cores, and when I run the same program, look at this, it took four minutes and six seconds. So that just shows you the difference in a Cortex A53 core that you get in a Raspberry Pi, and I've got four of them, compared to a proper server chip running in a huge configuration with lots of memory, lots of caches, and all the stuff that they need. So it's a difference of, look at that, four minutes to eight seconds. And of course, the Intel could do it in nine seconds. So there you go. And the thing is, of course, these are cheaper. You get these instances on Amazon cheaper than you get the Intel ones because uh, they're homegrown from Amazon. They use less power. So Amazon have to pay so much electricity bill. Uh, and probably, I don't know, maybe they're cheaper to make. Well, I don't know. Amazon haven't told us that. But they're selling them cheaper than they're selling the Intel ones. So the age of ARM is officially here. So I don't know about you, I find that really, really impressive. Now I want to end with a tweet by uh, John Masters, who's the chief ARM architect at Red Hat. So he's responsible for all of the ARM stuff that Red Hat Linux supports. Let me read you this tweet. From today, nobody ever got fired for deploying an ARM server into production. If it's good enough for Amazon Web Services, it's good enough for anyone. And wow, is it good stuff. And he's absolutely right. I mean, for Amazon to say, here is production level servers that we are rolling out, running Linux, running on ARM-based servers, and you can run your services off those today. Well, that is an absolutely a major change. So every time someone says to you that uh, Intel chips are always gonna be faster than ARM chips, and ARM chips, because of the architecture, because they're ARM, because I don't know what they think, that no. The thing we've got to remember is up until now, you're used to thinking about ARM chips because they're found in your phone and they're not found in a desktop with a big fan and 240 volts or 110 volts powering the power. That is changing. So we've got servers that are now powered by ARM. We've got laptops that are now being powered by ARM and we're gonna see great changes in that field over the next few years as more and more laptop specific devices come out, Windows gets better and better running on ARM, the support from third party apps get better. We are at the edge here of a complete change in the direction that the industry is taking. Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and please share this video on social media. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.